That means for every, when God blesses you with financial resources, in every increase and every blessing that God gives you, whether it comes as a salary, whether it comes as profits from a business, whether it comes as a one-off show of favor, in it, there is always seed and there is bread. Everybody say seed and say bread. Now watch this. The assignment of bread is to satisfy your current need. The assignment of seed is to make sure you are not hungry tomorrow. I repeat, the assignment of bread is to satisfy your current need. The assignment of seed is to make sure tomorrow there will still be food. If you sow your bread, you wasted it. If you eat your seed, you are going to lose. God is that benevolent that out of every money he sends your way, there is bread for today and there is seed for tomorrow when they cried the nation of israel cried for hunger god did not send seeds what did he send bread because they needed to eat it immediately now here is what most people do and i want to observe this respectfully speaking most of our elderly ones, people within the ages of say 80 down to say maybe 70, 60, that generation focused so much on seed and they forgot bread. That means they focused, they were so futuristic about securing the destiny of children and children's children that they forgot today. There are many people, it's until they die, you see how much they are worth. Now the children discover that this man who died had properties that he bought around. But while he was alive, there were times in that house they did not have food to eat. He did not know that out of all the monies that God brings, there is bread and there is seed. He carried both bread and seed and sowed it into the future. And now people were hungry and he himself did not benefit from the blessing of the Lord upon his life. And then you value one or two plots of land or one or two hectares of land and you find out that he left a total of 100 million and yet that same house children could not go to good schools that same house nobody had the opportunity to advance that was a mistake now our generation of young people our mistake is that we do not understand seed what we understand is bread are you getting it now so let tomorrow go places we eat both bread and seed today and then you find out someone who is supposed to be blessed today becomes a pauper and a beggar tomorrow overnight because they were bread conscious and not seed conscious are you learning something tonight that there was a generation that focused on seed and ignored bread you would find people who never built a house by themselves. Yet they had their assets and everything was in millions. Nobody benefited from their money. Not the kingdom, not them, not their children. Until they died. And then you have people who come to claim the inheritance who have no basis coming to that family. Because they were focused on the future. It is only when you are alive that you can get to the future. God is that benevolent to bring bread for today and seed for tomorrow but when you have a generation that also as a revenge mission i won't suffer my father he has done his own he has gone me i will enjoy my life now let me tell you this let me tell you this remember this is a deliverance service let me tell you this if you think like that you will be naked tomorrow it is painful to taste of the wealth and the prosperity of, of this kingdom and then tomorrow you go back and have a worse tomorrow than your yesterday. The path of the just should always be as a shining light. Are we together? So everything God gives you, when God gives you money for some of you from this month, when you collect salary or when you collect some profit, whatever it is, or just someone just decides to bless you, 
as you hold that money i want you to remember the law of increase increase is not just something you do through business it is a law that what you are holding in your hand there is seed and there is bread there is a part of it that is for tomorrow and there is a part of it that is for today you must be honest enough to be fair on yourself with the bread that is for today but you must also be disciplined enough to allow the one that should get into tomorrow to get tomorrow let me tell you this if you were to meet your accountant and ask him please i need a total of every money that has entered my bank account from when i opened it you will repent for one year for the kind of wastage you will sit down and say i can't imagine that hundred million has passed through this account one billion has passed through this account but no house no car no education where did it go to i will tell you you ate both seed and bread is god speaking to us don't say apostle all that i earn is just fifty thousand. what will it do every seed is small there is no seed that is a tree there is no seed that is as big as my hand god gave you favor january this year an uncle just blessed you and gave you one million what did you do you forgot god you forgot your future you forgot everything and you just said look i've suffered let me just let me let me do justice to myself now don't feel bad i'm not condemning you can i tell you this please you must obtain grace from god tonight to be disciplined enough to fight and reject the temptation anybody who advises you whether as friends and an association oh it's my birthday i have to spend it the way who said that why don't you take the time now and let your seed prepare a befitting birthday for you are we together there are people you see I'm, i don't mean to insult you but there are people who all they have in their account home and abroad is five hundred thousand. yet you will see them in a hotel where billionaires are the billionaires have assets that pay for their liabilities so they can spend hundred thousand in a moment somebody who owns an airline can be there having a business discussion they can spend one million right there because there are people queuing up to return the money at the airport they are not stupid people and then you find someone in their midst who are we together god is speaking to us the house of god is a place of wisdom can i tell you this listen please look up have the courage to look at friends look at everybody to say look i like this idea but i may not have the budget for this for now i will note it and when i am ready they will look at you and are you saying that nmpc job you are working in don't fall our hand don't do this can i tell you summon the courage to let them know you have mental prosperity mental prosperity there are people who would have been house owners in this city if only they knew how to eat bread and sow seeds is that true i don't mean to insult you and please forgive me if you think i do but there are people who have spent 10 years 20 years 30 years in abuja here they don't have one land as at the time land was 500,000 in some places 50,000 they watched it go from 1 million to 5 million to 10 million to 20 million there are people today as at the time they got their houses the surrounding lands were less than maybe 1 million they watch people come and today the only thing they have is a little maybe maybe half plot and they had the money how about people who can borrow 10 million or 20 million or 40 million to buy a jeep and be paying it with salary and then somebody now comes to hit that jeep and they tell you the shock absorber alone will buy you kekena pep <laughs> are you seeing the mistakes that we're making please take seriously what i'm saying we keep making very wrong decisions because we do not know that for everything god trusts you with 
in that 10,000 there is bread and there is seed if you don't respect the seed in the 10,000 1 million will never come is someone learning for some of us by reason of this message you will go and open an account like I teach the students and refuse to collect the ATM from the bank let that be the account where your seed apostle what do I do with it just make sure it is there first don't worry about what to do with it many of us have had the privilege do you know there are people in this nation who have had the honor and the privilege of meeting others who said look my house is valued at 30 million but I'm, I'm relocating to America if you have 5 million take and they could not take an offer because all the seeds God said keep because of these days of favor you ignored it and you were eating it and now a house of 30 million that will be given to you 5 million but because you ate both bread and seed can I tell you this don't regret the mistakes you made yesterday start now make up your mind and discipline yourself to start now for everything God gives you every financial resource God gives you there is bread and there is seed are we together bread is for today seed is for tomorrow practice savings practice savings when God blesses you take out your tithe believe in tithing 10% and then take out your seed many people recommend 20 percent of whatever you have so that you save it i told the school of ministry students you can save 20 percent of your income if you have time what is pursuing you is what determines how you run is that true if a chicken is pursuing you you can run carelessly but if a lion is pursuing you you will run with the energy of an athlete so if you know you have made mistakes and now at, at 40, at age 40, you are saving 20% of your income, you will not go far. When you are talking to a child of 13, 14 years, you can tell him to start saving 10, 20%. But I'm telling you, if you really, 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 really want to make progress financially, you must practice the law of increase. And then learn to save. Save. There are two basic reasons why we save. Number one, for emergencies number two for investment write it down in another series we'll take our time to deal with it there are only two reasons why we save money number one for emergencies number two for investments by the way you may want to write this down the only way money multiplies is through investments there is no other way the only way money multiplies is through investments what is investment acquisition of assets that is for another series wealthy people never take on any liability and expenditure until they can show the assets that will pay for it they spend their lives acquiring the assets that pay for their liabilities so when you meet a wealthy man and you say daddy i want to celebrate birthday he will not just carry one million and give you he will check from all his investments which one will pay for that liability if there is no investment that pays for it he will be patient that is the economy of the wealthy the only way money grows ladies and gentlemen please hear me investments in another series we may not have time to teach that now but it is important for you to know that the law of increase is very important you need to experience increase not just the arrival of financial resources almost everybody here with decent planning no matter what level you can put something together while you are praying lord open doors of favor for me but then you are practicing your savings and you are putting something down god can now open a door for you and then you have abundant financial resources every time you spend everything you have know that your future is crying every time you spend everything you have you just punished your future practice frugality the absence of wastage justifiable expenditures be frugal especially where you are rising there are people who can afford to be 
you know, uh, quite um, luxurious with their lives because they have paid the price to build systems that can replenish. Where you are starting and where you are rising, you must be frugal. Can I be honest with you? You know that you are really making progress financially when people underestimate your real worth because you reduce yourself many levels below your true worth so that you can grow. People should not be able to look at you and estimate and say, you are 10 million, you are 1 billion, you are 500 million, you are 200 million, you are 500,000. No, you should leave many layers below your true worth as a sacrifice to truly get to the wealthy place. That is the philosophy of wealthy people. A man may, make, may be a millionaire and yet you still see him living a modest life, being frugal. The day you see him acting as if he's a millionaire, he has become a billionaire since. So if you join him just because you made one or two million, I hope you know a millionaire is not who, one who has one million or two million. No. A millionaire is one who has relationships that can maintain that level, intelligence that can maintain that level, systems and structures that can replenish at that level, and then financial resources that is at least 10 million. If not, you are not a millionaire. So you see all this philosophy of 1 million or 1.5, and we say we are millionaires, then we say we have made it, and then we crash back to 100,000 again as a punishment for not learning. We start again, and we repeat the same mistake. Life is a brutal teacher. It will teach you as many times as you need to learn. Painful teaching tonight, but a profitable one. Are we learning? The law of increase. For the sake of this series, the next time we're going to look at the law of relation. And then we'll look at the law of investments. And you'll be learning that investment is not just about money. Like prosperity, there are five levels of investment. Spiritual investment, mental investment, investment in your body, and financial investment. And then we'll be learning how to store wealth. It's one thing to have so much, but you must know how to store it. The Bible says strong men retain wealth. There are people who have risen to one billion, billions, and 10 years after they crash back, to the point that they cannot bring 200,000. It's a terrible life. That's not God's design for us. It is the reason why in Africa we do not perpetuate wealth because it starts and ends with us. You start from zero naira, you rise to one billion. By the end of your life, you are minus one. Your children start, they balance up that to zero and start again. It's not supposed to be so. The Bible says a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children, not his children. You must be two generations ahead. That's how you measure your success. A quick recap. Number one, the law of mental transformation. Number two, the law of value. Are we still here? Number three, the law of productivity. Number four, the law of increase.